hope you are all having a wonderful day. Here with Spellbinders with their card kit of the month for March, and it is called Have a Springy Day. And first, as always, we're going to go through the contents. So you get your card that shows you everything that you get in your kit and your card stock. So you're getting a mirror, a black, a light blue, a bright blue, a bright green, yellow, purple, dark pink, and a lighter pink. You also get your 10 envelopes and 10 card bases. These are standard A2 size, four and a quarter by five and a half, and they are side folding. You also get your six by six paper pad. Now again, this is paper, this is not cardstock. Um, so it is on a lighter weight, but that's perfect for layering. They've kind of changed up the format of their pad, at least for this one. <laughs> Um, where instead of having one sheet of each first and then a second set, they're now doubling them up um, with each other. So the two uh, design or the two sheets of each design are actually back to back now, which is not a problem. Get a pack of white iridescent sequins. As always, a roll of double sided tape and a square of double sided foam squares. I love to keep those. Um, so you'll see me use some from previous kits that I've keep. Our chipboard stickers, some glitter sentiment stickers, and then of course my favorite, the die cut pack. Uh, this is just full of so many images. Uh, you can make cards or note cards in no time using that alone. Your stamp set with some great sentiments and a cute little lamb and some flowers, and then your die set, which will make an adorable bunny or lamb, which is really great. Let's get started with our first card. I've cut down my pattern paper, and this pattern paper is cut down to be four by five and a quarter. Um, all of my mats are cut that way. I've added the double-sided tape and I'm removing the release paper so that I can get this up onto my card base. And I'm using my tool-in-one uh, on the pokey side uh, to help me release that. I cut a strip of the gold mirror cardstock and I'm going to be using the die cuts for this card. I'm going to have that piece of mirror card uh, mirror cardstock go straight across the card from side to side so it will overlap over the mat. Uh, which is something that I like. I think it adds interest to the front of the card um, instead of just having everything blocked in on to that panel. I'm going to cut off the edges so that it's even and we're going to place our heart down. I'm going to be using some double-sided uh, foam squares to set that down and then we're going to place our images. Now usually when I choose my die cut images I choose like images. Uh, when I'm doing my collages. So in this case, these were planners and holders um, with florals coming out of it. I have those going around the heart. Again, just to add some dimension. When I work with this kit, I am a huge fan. What I get inspired from this kit is to collage to layer up my images, whether they're the die cuts, whether they are the chipboard pieces or the frames that you get. Um, I do enjoy collaging. I think these make absolutely terrific note cards um, with a phrase or a sentiment on it, but they are definitely great note cards. So making your 10 cards um, from the kit is done in no time and it makes a great gift for somebody. On to our next card, again focusing on the die cuts and the chipboard pieces. Put the double-sided adhesive on the back of the uh, pattern paper, setting that down onto my card base. I cut a strip of one of the other pattern papers and I'm just going to line up a lamb and a bunny along with a banner and just set that scene up. Remember with a kit, I get a lot of questions of, well, how did you know this paper went with that? How did you match these two things up? The beauty of a kit 
takes what I refer to as the thought process out. Kits are designed when there's pattern papers and stamps and inks and anything else. They're designed to match. They're designed to go together. So it doesn't matter what pattern papers you choose, they will match um, in a sense because that's, that's how that kit is put together, especially with a paper pad. Whether you're using a paper pad such as this one from the Spellbinders kit or whether you have your own paper pad um, that you're hoarding in your stash, all those papers go together. Whether they're large prints, small prints, whether they're backgrounds, whether they're just shades, they will work together. So that is the beauty of when something is packed like that, such as this kit or any of the other kits that are out there, or again, just a paper pad. So something to keep in mind. You can't go wrong. On to our next card. Again, added the double-sided tape to the back. Um, set that down onto the card base. I cut another strip of the mirrored cardstock. And since this mirrored cardstock is double-sided, I do like to put or use the double-sided tape. You can use glue. I have as well, but it really slides around. It takes a little bit for the glue to dry um, and to grab a hold of the mirror cardstock. So it is something that can move if you're just using glue. I cut another strip from the pattern paper, a lighter uh, leaf print, and I'm just going to set that off from the mirror strip. And now we've got all of these beautiful florals. So we're just going to have fun with the placement and propping some up using some foam tape and using our glue to set those down. So even with this one, let's talk about the spell binders. You have die cuts, you have um, chipboard pieces, you have foam sentiments. They all work well together. Uh, whether it's the color scheme, whether it's the images uh, or anything like that. Now you can be specific with your images as well, like I do. Um, when I'm collaging, I, I like to group like items together, especially the florals. The florals, I will grab all of those and just put them right on top of a card base because I know I'm going to do something with them, um, whether it's accenting a quarter piece or whether it's creating a wreath or background. And then whatever extras I can use those to, to fill in. So, you know, look at your, at your pattern papers or your kits in that way. Again, no matter how you mix your papers, you're just not going to go wrong. They're designed to work together. You can see I have my cluster of florals down to the bottom left, and then I added one of the glitter sentiments that simply says bloom. I'm using the chipboard uh, frame that we have here, and I cut a piece of cardstock, that pink wood, uh, down to size so that it'll fit right in the back of that setting down my backdrop, grabbing that frame and lightly just touching it, making sure that it's not sticking around the edges, but pressing down to make sure I have good uh, contact between the paper and the frame. I'm gonna add some glue to the back, set that down onto the front, and then here come some more florals. These are a little bit differently set, but I'm accenting that frame on the bottom and the top, and I fell in love with these cute little tiny pastel ladybugs that'll just sit around so you can with the frame you can kind of get this two-tone look along with dimension on your card as well remember with your foam squares that you get in the kit you can use the entire square so after you use the little tiny squares that you poke out um, you can actually cut up those blocks and use those as foam um, dimension as well. That's why I keep them. So sometimes I use a lot of them and when I put my videos together, sometimes I don't. And whatever's left over, I always, I have a little tiny pot that sits on my table and I just throw them in there and I just make sure that I keep using them. I'm going to use one of the banner strips from the chipboard and I'm going to set that right along the top, just above the bottom florals. 
This one here, I thought the rainbow was cute with the clouds and the sun because one of the pattern papers looked like raindrops. So I've cut that down to a certain size. First, I'm going to put my mat of the sun and clouds. So we're going to create a scene onto this framed piece and just layering and laying out the rainbow and the clouds because they're going to come off of that square. So now I know I'm going to take my rainbow, set that right down to the bottom, put the sun just up in behind that. And I'm going to get this down onto my card base because I'm going to add lots of dimension uh, when it comes to the clouds that I add off of the rainbow. I'm going to set that up just a little bit higher, not centered onto the card. I thought I was going to use that circle rainbow in the center of the sun. Um, but I thought it was too big. So now I'm just setting in my clouds. One's going to be propped up and the other one's going to poke out from underneath it. Then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I also grabbed the cute pair of little rain boots. Um, thought they were cute and they're just going to go right down underneath that cloud as well. I grabbed the sentiment from the glitter foam um, you are my sunshine. So I'm going to have that come right down the front, um, right along the front, but keeping it within that panel there. So I'm just eyeballing this, um, using the top line of that square to line myself up and then lining up the rest of my letters. I'm okay if they're a little bit wonky. Um, I think that just adds character when it comes to our sentiment. I'm going to take the sunshine straight across that rainbow. So you have your two different fonts. And I did not lose the top of the eye, which is awesome. I'm on a roll. I'm going to make sure that's all pressed down. Clean up my glue because I got it everywhere that's what we do and we're just going to add a few of these white iridescent sequins to the clouds just to accent them and that is that card for our next one again setting down my um my panel onto my card base. And then what I did was I took a piece of the black cardstock in the kit, um, cut it to a certain size, and then cut a piece of the pattern paper to a um, size, I think it's like three by three. Again, I don't measure, I just cut. I just have fun with it. But by cutting these pieces this way, it almost looks like a Polaroid. So you don't have to have the cutout in the center just by cutting a solid piece and then putting another piece on top of that will give you the illusion that it is a Polaroid picture. So I'm going to set that right in the center of my panel and I grabbed all kinds of die cuts, especially the butterflies. And I grabbed these three with love, care and joy and the butterflies are going to come off of them. So it's like a little tiny note being sent going to prop up the envelope with the florals and set that right towards the base of that opening and then just playing around with the placement of the butterflies where I want them to sit. Um, I do want them to be connected to those three small sentiments that I have along the bottom. To me that grounds them, meaning it grounds the squares with the sentiments um, and makes it part of the image. Some of just one of the butterflies, I'm going to add a couple of sequins and I'm going to add one to the envelope. For this card, I'm going to have a little play with the adorable critters that are within the die cuts. So I pulled out the lamb and the three chicks um, that are lined up next to each other going to set down my panel and then I have this grid. It does have some gold foiling on it and I'm going to set that down in the bottom right hand corner. 
because that's going to be the mat where my critters are going to sit. So I grabbed this row of flowers, very springy, and then we're just going to keep lining everything up as we go. Um, so just filling in. And then I just have a couple uh, stamp and that little tiny card that I'm going to tuck in there as well. And then some sequins. I think I chose not to use the stamp. Yes. For the next one, I'm also going to use the solid cardstock to create a mat. Sometimes, while all of your papers match each other, sometimes if you have a backdrop that, um, while this is pale, it's it's got a lot going on. It's crisscrossing. It's going to the left. It's going to the right. Up, down. So it's got a lot of movement there. So by simply using a piece of solid cardstock as a mat to one of your pattern papers, it helps for that pattern paper that you've matted to become a focal point. And also to make it look like it's coming up off of that page without adding any of your dimensional foam squares. So you can see it's, it's framed. I'm using the Hello Glitter Sentiment, and again, just lining up, eyeballing it, lining up those letters along the bottom of that white mat that I have. Again, not too worried if the letters are crooked or wonky. Again, it, it adds character. I'm going to place the basket just above the Hello. The one L, though, was bothering me. Had to fix that. Going to place the basket down and then just continue to grab some of my other elements. So there was a separate lemon. So that's what's in the basket. So I figured I would accent that with some lemons propped up. Got a cute stamp that I'm just going to make look like coming out of the basket as well. And then these adorable little bees. So using those actually as embellishments. Um, don't always have to use your sequins or gems. Um, you can actually use the smaller die cuts and use those to embellish your card. For this card here, we're going to make a landscape. Um, usually my cards are always a portrait, um, meaning the elongated goes up. So it's four and a quarter wide by five and a half inches tall. Um, this time we're going to turn it and we're going to add our houses along the bottom again creating a scene with our die cuts just looking how best they'll be placed I want to add a little bit of shine so I'm going to take a leftover strip of the mirrored cardstock and just add that along the bottom as well it will help these houses to pop just a little bit I'm going to set the fence in line first and then we're going to prop up our houses on either side. I did use the stamp set uh, for the sentiment and what I actually used too from the die set um, is the topping for the lamb. It looks like a cloud. Um, so I actually stamped my um, my sentiment down and then I used that die to go around it to make it look like a cloud above the houses. And we're going to prop that up over the wheel, but basically just looking for those flowers to come out from the top of it. Again, adding some more sequins just to give it some sparkle in the sky. So here's where I play around with the die cuts. So I have all my die cuts done just to save time. I'm coming in with my white pigment ink um, and one of my makeup brushes here. And I am adding some white over that. So just to give a little bit of a cloud effect um, onto that blue cardstock from the kit. 
I'm going to add my double-sided tape to the back of my pattern paper, which is a beautiful watercolor look floral, and then just set that uh, cardstock right on top. I'm going to start building. Now I have, I die cut everything, but I also am using some scrap cardstock for the back so that I can inlay the nose, inlay the cheeks with different colors of cardstock, even the eyes. Um, and no, I did not lose a piece, which I was really surprised at. I'm just saying. I'm going to set the center of the ears because the one ear does flop forward. And I am going to set a piece of scrap paper behind that so that I can have that flat. I didn't want to put that on top of the ear. I liked the way that it cut through. And the pencil that I'm using to pick up these small pieces, it's actually a wax pencil. I use that for um, picking up my sequins and gems um, and small pieces of cardstock. So I'm setting the ears and I'm using my reverse tweezers uh, from Spellbinders to hold those in place. I'm going to put, I cut a little tiny bow or die cut the bow as well and I'm putting a little flower on top of that just so that will be able to sit on her ear. I added glue into the openings for the eyes and the nose and cheeks. So I used black for the eyes so that they would stand out and the darker pink for the cheeks and then the paler pink for the nose. I'm going to add a little bit of glue and just pop that bow right at the base of that one ear. And then when it comes to the sentiment, you can see that hello there, you get a sentiment die in there. There's a flower that comes off of it. I end up cutting that um, because I just wanted the wave of the sentiment. So again, you can change up uh, your dies just a little bit. Uh, like I used the top to make the lamb. If I wanted to make this a lamb, I would not use the ears. I would use that cloud die and then that would make it a lamb. Um, made it into a cloud for one of the sentiments, which I think is great. Again, think outside the box. Think of what else you can do with your dies. I do apologize. I'm off to the side there. Didn't realize that. Um, but I set down my image using some glue and some double-sided foam squares. Here I'm coming in with a smaller set of scissors just to cut off those leaves. I do want that piece to extend just a little bit playing around with that placement and I'm going to add glue to the back of that and then place that down onto my panel again sorry I did not realize I was um, kind of sort of off camera there so I think it makes an adorable bunny and it would probably it also an adorable lamb as well so here's a regular speed look at all the cards that we made today featuring the Spellbinders card kit of the month for March 2022 and again it is called have a springy day yes I am looking forward to spring to come at least warm up just a little bit get me into the low 50s and I'd be happy if you have any questions please make sure you leave those down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and as always the products that I used will be linked down below so below you'll see the link to their shop to their blog for even more inspiration also to all of their club kits that are available um, you can get them individually or you can get them in sets um, which will help you save money um, so I encourage you to at least be inspired through the blog um, and the gallery of wonderful images there. I hope you enjoyed today's video and by all means keep creating. Um, keep creating your art. Your art is art um, and I will always keep telling you that. It's unique, it's beautiful, and it's yours. Have fun with this. Don't stress. We should never stress over a craft. We should be able to enjoy it, relax, um, and see what we can create and what we can come up with because you can't destroy anything. Enjoy your day, but always remember what's most important. Always be creative, everyone. Until the next video, take care.